systemic racism. You said you don't believe systemic racism. I do. I, I do not. At all in the U.S. I do not. You don't think there's any systemic racism against African Americans in the United States? I will say it again. I do not. All right, this isn't a believing in something like the tooth fairy. All right, it's about fact. He is wrong. It's not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of fact. Oh, goody. Another day talking about race. Well, everywhere you look right now, people are claiming that systemic racism is 100% real. And anybody challenging that claim must be an ignorant racist. This was the narrative over at CNN today when Chris Cuomo freaks out after Larry Kudlow basically just says he doesn't believe systemic racism exists today like it used to. A good answer since there's no hard evidence of systemic racism. You may as well be hunting ghosts. People like Chris Cuomo point to the arrest and policing of black Americans, suggesting that they're being targeted for their skin color. This despite FBI data that correlates with victims reports suggesting that there is no widespread discrimination. For this reason alone, anybody calling themselves a journalist should not be declaring systemic racism a fact. Not when there's so many other factors at play that should be considered. Sorry for the interruption, but just give me 30 seconds to tell you about this special deal for my subscribers. Let me show you all one of the things that's helping me to look better and feel great. Collagen may be the closest thing that we ever get to a real fountain of youth and many health experts now agree consuming collagen is as crucial as it gets to renewing and revitalizing how you look and feel so visit my page at www.healthwithdronetech.com and secure your supply of the best collagen on the market to make his case chris cuomo presented his damning evidence showing wealth disparities between white and black americans all right, this isn't a believing in something like the tooth fairy. All right, it's about fact. He is wrong. It's not a matter of opinion. It's a matter of fact. The immediate proof is in the cabinet. Trump has one black cabinet member and one black domestic policy advisor. Kudlow's the president's economic advisor. So let's start with the economy. Oh, come on now, Chris. Systemic racism is real because Trump only has two black cabinet members. There's 21 cabinet positions and you need two or three black Americans to fill those in order to be representative of their population size. Even Barack Obama only had two cabinet positions filled with African Americans. It is, however, true that Barack Obama had two non-traditional cabinet positions that he filled with black Americans, but that's actually over-representation. So right off the bat, he's got some really flimsy evidence to back up his theory. White people make more money than blacks do, period. In fact, that fundamental divide is as wide now as it was the year Dr. King was shot. So much for Trump's economy being the best ever for black people. Well, I guess that's that. So much for Trump, right? Oh, wait, there's something kind of strange about that graph he presented. Well, would you look at that? It's showing the economic data from the Obama administration. Because as we all remember, the left and their media were brutally critical of Barack Obama and his systemically racist economy. <laughs> You are looking at an American political phenomenon. You know, you are the, the equivalent of a rock star in yeah. politics. Many people afterwards, they weren't sure how to pronounce your name, but they were moved by you. People were crying. You tapped into something. You touched people. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg, and, and, and that is an objective assessment. How does this feel of all the honors that have come your way, all the publicity? Who's it make you think of? Is there a, is there a loved one? I, I like to say that in some ways, Barack Obama is the first president since George Washington to be taking a step down into the Oval Office. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, people from all over the world, frankly, say to me, here comes a president with a huge mandate, a huge reservoir of goodwill, huge promises to change. And with all of that, his popularity is down. People don't uh, appreciate some of the amazing legislative agenda that he's accomplished. Don't know if the Iran deal is going to work. If it does, it will be the major foreign policy achievement, not only of this presidency, but of this American generation. At which point, people in the not too distant future will look back at this presidency. They'll look back at this president and they'll say, Oh, of course they gave him the Nobel Peace Prize. Of course they did. That totally makes sense. Oh, wait, no, they claim he's the best president ever. What am I talking about? So let's break this down a little bit. Chris Cuomo claims that there's systemic racism in our country because of wealth disparities between white and black Americans. For one, why doesn't he show the disparities between black and Hispanic people? Black people are doing better. Is that because of systemic racism? Or how about the disparities between whites and Asians? 
That's because if he did, it would blow a serious hole in his systemic racism conspiracy theory. Asian people are doing substantially better than whites in both wealth and education. If this country is systemically racist to benefit white people, it would seem that we're not doing it right. So clearly there are other factors at play here, but these partisan activists don't seem to ever look inward, always outward towards a scapegoat. And I'm not going to go too deeply into this because I've been talking about it for the last few videos, but broadly generalizing a whole group of people white people who constitute almost 200 million people in this country is about as racist as you can get. Fredo wasn't done though, accusing Trump supporters of quote, wanting to put down people begging for change. And Trump sees an opportunity to make everything that's happening there and really everywhere about his political opponents and their radical ranks. His move calls to dominate the people on the streets, dangling troops again. Wonder what effect that will have on people who say they are tired of being dominated. It's more like a dog whistle, right? To his base. And too many of them want to see the people who are begging for change put down. Despite the fact that this all began violently, right now it's entirely peaceful. In fact, you can see these protesters behind me. And in fact, let's pan the camera around, Chris, because it really has the feel of a street festival. How is this not incitement to violence? Why is he allowed to get on the national airways and accuse half of the country, millions of people, of wanting to murder the other half? Did he take a poll or is he just broadly generalizing and demonizing as usual? I suppose if he's talking about a bunch of violent anarcho-communists, yeah, I want to see them put down. Meanwhile, it's the left-wingers in Seattle actually taking over a swath of the city, surrounding the police precinct with armed men and a warlord SoundCloud rapper named Raz. Cuomo considers this legitimate protest. Does anybody think for one second that if we all started forming militia and taking over cities, that Chris Cuomo would be out there running cover for us? Of course not. This is completely insane. And the only reason it's tolerated is because these people are the left and the media's foot soldiers. So when it comes down to good judges of right and wrong, Chris Cuomo is not who I'd look to for that guidance. He's a roid raging liar who makes millions dividing this country along racial and political lines. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. It's the only way this channel can grow. If you'd like to support it, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.